Runcorn Hill is a local nature reserve steeped in history, where generations of Runcorn people have formed an everlasting bond. The hill has always been important to the people of Runcorn. Today it is a wonderful leisure facility, which affords fabulous views, stretching over the River Mersey to the distant Welsh hills. In the past, it enabled them to earn a living through quarrying. Great-great-grandparents of the people you see here would have moved into the area from other quarrying towns in Cumbria and Wales in order to work the sandstone. But life here goes further back still. In the Triassic period, when Cheshire was a dry red desert subjected to torrential storms, creatures such as the Chirotherium and the smaller Chelonia, which was similar to a modern-day tortoise, made their way towards Weston, past where the cottages now stand. The desert eventually formed sandstone, and fossil footprints of these creatures are concealed in the rock that forms Runcorn Hill. This is just the start of what's hidden on Runcorn Hill. And my name is Alex Foote. I'm a member of Friends of Runcorn Hill. During this short film, I shall be interviewing people about their personal memories of Runcorn Hill. Hi, Alf. Um, you have some interesting memories of the working quarries in Runcorn. Yes, I do, yes. Um, if you stand on the bridge that separates Western and Runcorn quarries, looking down towards the Mersey, Western quarries on the left, Runcorn quarries are on the right. The Western quarries were the quarries I saw working uh, and quite a few of the people that worked there I knew. My brother worked there. Um, the stone was moved from the quarries through tunnels leading down on the Western Road down to Western Point to Wright Stock. Originally they were the, the uh, bogies were brought back into the quarries by uh, an endless drum. Uh, when that broke down, they started using horses, and eventually a Model T Ford was adapted. This was driven by Mr Leach, and this was adapted to bring the bogies back up into the quarry. It, they weren't needed to go down from the quarry because it was gravity fed down into Western Point. Uh, the stone was used extensively, went to Chester Cathedral, different churches in Runcorn, some were shipped over to America for uh, dock walls, and uh, loads and loads of the stone, small pieces were used for walling different places. Uh, unfortunately, the quarrying was stopped when the dam broke and the slurry from the workings broke into the quarry. There's a, a wall with a, a bracket, an iron bracket. Many, many years ago, there was two double brackets there. This, we didn't know as children what this was for, but I have found out since that a flagpole was, well, I, I must admit I did see the flagpole, but I, I was told that the flag a red flag used to fly if any blasting was being done in the quarries. Uh, another thing that I've always been curious about, on Western Quarry there were five st small, small stone houses and the quarry workers used to live in these houses. One of these uh, families was the Bentleys and one of my best friends was Kenny Bentley. Uh, I often used to play up there with Kenny and when he started work we used to go out together. What I was always trying to find out was why 
this name of Montserrat was given to those houses. I've not been able to find out. Nobody seems to know why. Ray, um, your mother's memories must go back an awful long way. Um, could you perhaps tell us some of the recollections? My grandfather, Mr. Orme, was the last owner of Western Quarries. In fact, this house we're in now, it used to be his home. He had the wall built from Weston down to Sandy Lane. My grandfather played the concertina and the images in front of the house, they were done by stonemason as part payment for teaching his son to play the concertina. I think all my family have been connected with the quarries. In fact, one of my aunties married a Mr. Guest who was a quarry owner. My great grandmother also owned five of the quarrymen's cottages which are in Ireland Road. No, I don't want to go on. No, mustn't put me on it. Don't worry, you're not saying anything. You've done well. You've given them all the information, haven't you? You could go on in my place. <laughs> I have done. <laughs> Mrs Turner has a photograph of the first World War battle tank, which stood where the playing fields are now. The tank was placed as a reminder of the contribution to the war made by the people who stayed at home. Unfortunately, it was scrapped for metal in World War II. Hello, Peter. I believe a relative of yours had uh, associations with the cottages in Highlands Road. Oh, yes. My grandma lived here at uh, number 61. They were called Snuffy Row to the locals in those days because they were quarrymen's cottages and snuff was one of their standbys, I think. It helped to clear the tubes. The Second World War must have contributed to your store of memories of Runcorn Hill. Can you recall any of them for us? I was arriving into my teens by then and I do remember the big air raid shelter in Happy Valley, you know, uh, which was one of the tunnels to, for the quarries down to Western Point and uh, also on the top of Frog's Mouth there was a pillbox that somebody had made out of an old works boiler and uh, that stood on the top on the rock there and you can still see where it had been all those years ago. Hello Flo, I believe the tunnels of Runcorn Hill were used as air raid shelters. Yes they were. Uh, I remember quite vividly the very first air raid we had. Uh, we were in bed and the sirens went just gone midnight and my dad, he worked in the cell room at ICI so he was on nights and my mother got us up. There was myself, my sister and two brothers. My sister, I was 12, my sister was 10. One brother was seven and my youngest brother was a baby. So my mother told us to hurry up and get dressed. And when we were all ready, she said, well, hurry up the field to the tunnel, but keep together. And I had to give my youngest brother a piggyback up the field. And when we got to the top of the field by the tunnel, nobody had remembered the key. And people were panicking. And Billy Crawford, he was in his teens. He lived in Roscoe Crescent. He volunteered to go down for the key. And it was kept in a brown box with a glass front on the front of Robotham's house, which was the end of a block of four, but it came adjacent to the entrance to the field we went up. And he got the key, ran back, and then we went in the tunnel and we sat in there till early hours of the morning, long after the uh, all clear had gone. And then um, after that, we went down sort of early morning home and my mother said, well, rather than panic again like that, I think we better sleeping up there. So in, in the afternoon, she used to put the blankets in my brother's pram and um, 
my sister and I used to wheel it up the, ton up the field. Then when we got to the tunnel, we used to put the blankets on the forms and that's where we slept at night. And then we'd go back down for a tea and after tea, we'd all go up and sleep there. There was toilets in there, electric lights, um, and those forms either side of the tunnel. Um, I suppose they were hard to sleep on, but as children, you didn't think about that. And we slept up there for weeks and weeks and weeks until more or less people got, um, you know, more secure. And then we sort of stepped, slept at home, but we slept up there. Well, I could say weeks, it could have been months. We slept up there because the air raids were pretty frequent. And they used to say, well, they were trying to bomb Kastner's. But um, over at Hale Bank, that used to be uh, lit up at night with the incendiary bombs that used to drop. Um, it was quite a sight, really. Doreen, Runcorn Hill must have been a welcome place for families to retreat to. Did your family use it much? As a family, uh, we weren't used to annual holidays, so Runcorn Hill was our destination. And I had a huge group of lovely friends. We used to go up there and spend the day there. And we'd play hide and seek, and the boys would play cowboys and Indians, and we'd go home. But we always had to take a piece of Greek stone from my mother's step, and it had to be a certain size, and she was happy then. Doreen, you have one very special memory. We'd love you to tell us about it. The best memories I have of Run Cornell are the time I spent there with my boyfriend, Ken, who later became my husband. We'd go up there and walk, talk, and spend time together, beautifully innocent. And one time he told me he'd got a secret, and I was eager to find out what it was. He told me he'd carved our initials in the sandstone, but I think they've faded now. But I think the frog is keeping a happy memory. I shall cherish that as long as I live. Hi, Doreen. How old were you when you first started to play up on Runcorn Hill? I'd be about seven or eight and we used to go because our parents were happy with us to play there because it was safe and we were, were able to go up there on our own because there was really no traffic along Western Road. So we used to play there quite happily. And then we used to make our way up to Frog's Mouth and the boys used to play up there as well as us girls. But the boys, there was a ledge along Frog's Mouth that their boys used to crawl along as a dare game. And then all the, boy, all the girls used to go down into Happy Valley and play amongst the ferns and everything. And later on, that was when we realised it was the rear entrance to the air raid shelter we used to use during the war. And that was, nowadays, it's the top of what is Hillside Avenue. Mm. But when the air raids were on, Dad used to walk me up there and Mum used to carry my brother Michael. And we each had our own beds. And we used to spend the nights, we had blankets, and it was nice and cosy and everybody used to help. And then one night, Dad said to me, um, come with me, I want to show you something, and I'll show you something that you'll never, ever forget. Mm. And he took me up onto Frog's Mouth, and as we got there and we looked over the river, I, there was a huge red glow, and I said, what's that? And he said, that is Liverpool burning, and that is something that you will never, ever forget. Hi Chris, can you give us some of your memories of when you were young on Runcorn Hill? Yes, we used to play war games on Runcorn Hill with a gun for a stick and sometimes we'd play cavemen and sometimes you suddenly find yourself in prehistoric times looking for the lost dinosaurs of Weston and we'd look for ancient footprints from the cavemen and have our prehistoric meat paste butties followed by water in a glass bottle from a lost tribe called the Co-op and in the distance you could see smoke signals from Fort ICI. We used to use glass jam jars to go tadpole in, then wash them out in the dirty pond water and then we'd go blackberry picking on Runcorn Hill. And when I got home 
Mum would make blackberry pies with rice pudding, and you know I can still taste them now. The Cove Walk, Millie. It's a beautiful spot. Do you always remember it like that? Yes, it's a beautiful place. We used to come up from Sandy Lane and go under the bridge by the side of the isolation hospital and there was the sandy path stretching before us with the silver birch trees overhanging and the leaves rustling and the grasses cascading onto the path. It's a truly magical place and we all loved it. My mother used to tell us the names of the flowers the foxgloves and the harebells and I've always had a love of flowers since then. Sometimes we went with Dad up to the hills, he was always a hands-on Dad, and we'd sit on the side of the reservoir, he'd sit on the side of the reservoir by himself most of the time because we'd run off. We found an old air raid shelter that had been used uh, during the war that we used to uh, pop in and out of and then when we'd been quiet long enough he'd come to find us because <laughs> he wondered where we were because there were three of us and uh, we, we did get into mischief sometimes. Uh, on the path by the uh, visitor centre um, there was a, a, we used to have a den, there's a, a, just a small quarry there and there's a sort of indentation in the rock and we used to we used to try and sit on it. It was so narrow you couldn't really call it a, a, a cave at all. And nearby was a, a, a large rock which we called the Council Stone. Don't ask me where that came from. It's one of my, my books I'd been reading and I was the boss of the group so I sat on the, the uh, corner of the stone and uh, I'm sure my sisters didn't listen to me but uh, I felt I was the boss there. I, I went back to see it uh, the other week and there it was, still there, but carved into a frog. I was quite surprised. More recently uh, we used the hill for a different purpose my sisters and I wanted to watch Concord. We'd been warned it was coming over and uh, everybody in our family decided we'd go and meet on, on the hill, uh, on Beacon Hill, to see it land. Um, my, my sister went for my father and he was there and my other sister came from uh, Winsford and she was there and we all stood and the, the tremendous noise came over the hill and we could see the pilot's face and then it went over the Mersey and we saw it land at Speak Airport. It was a magnificent sight. Um, years ago when I used to come up to Ronghorn Hill we did have some fun. It was brilliant. My mother used to say, where are you going? I'm going up the park for butterflies. She didn't know what's going on Ronghorn Hill. <laughs> she used to say, you'll get killed up on that Ronghorn Hill, yeah. But we never did, we never got into mischief like that. Kids today don't know how to make their own fun about things. But I was into lepidoptery, which is the name for studying butterflies. And I studied the English butterflies and moths. And I did that for years, and I did a, a bit of lizards and newts as well. There are now no newts hardly at all on Runcorn Hill, and I don't think there's any lizards. But there's still a few butterflies, although they are dwindling in this country very much. I mean, I've got buddleias in the garden, which attract butterflies. And I don't get half as many as I used to do 10 years ago. So, I mean, they are dwindling very much so. So don't kill butterflies or anything, please. I mean, I used to years ago, but it was only as a, a hobby. I only used to kill one of it, each species to uh, put them in a box and um, then talk about them to different people because there were a lot of people interested in butterflies at that time. But also, they're a very interesting subject to get into. Their wings are made up of like small quills and they overlap one another, similar to a bird's wing and that. Um, the overlapping causes them to be able to put the wings more or less in a straight line when they fold up to go to sleep. And people don't realise this. They, 
they think there's just something funny about it, but it's not. When you look at it prospectively, it, it is a very good thing. They, they just look like two straight lines and a little body when once they're asleep. But yes, I've collected butterflies for years, and then when I went to Frodham and had my children, it just stopped, didn't it? I had no time. But like I say, we used to have some fun, it was brilliant. And uh, I just wish kids today would go and find the same fun that we used to have up there. Um, it was really brilliant. My dad had used to say, you taking the dog for a walk tonight? No. My mum would say, no, it frightened the butterflies, won't it? <laughs> so I wouldn't take the dog for a walk if I was going on butterfly hunting, but I did used to take the dog for a walk up Runghorn Hill and it, it was good. Although we were after butterflies, we still had fun in the fact that the war was still on. We still had to listen for air raids and such. And um, people didn't know how to contend with that really, but today's people definitely don't know how to contend with it. But like I say, war was on, rationing was on until 1952, and I'm talking about 44, 45, which is quite a few years ago. Hello, Liz. Uh, what do you remember of your childhood, especially the times you spent on Runcorn Hill? I think the first memory I've got of being on Runcorn Hill was when I was about three years old, so it was probably 1945. And I remember it must have been in the spring, probably May, because the daisies were out on the grass. And I was with my mother, and it was the war hadn't quite finished, the men weren't there, but we were having a picnic on the grass there on a rug and she was showing me how to make daisy chains. And so the sun was shining and I can, I can remember distinctly that she was singing little songs to me and the band was playing. It must have been some sort of celebration because there weren't just the two of us. There were lots of other people there as well, all sitting on the grass and probably picnicking a bit as well. And so it was, it was quite a nice memory to, to have of that because I think it was probably just at the end of the war. It might have been a celebration for the end of the war in some respects. And all I can remember is the, the, the black rock, the big slabs of black rock at the back of us, making a kind of square to run round in. And, and the people just enjoying themselves in the sun and being taught how to make a daisy chain, how to do it with your thumbnail and thread the daisies through. And uh, that's one of my first memories of Runcorn Hill with my mum, singing Whispering Grass. Don't tell the trees, because the trees don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. Time moves on, but people still continue to visit what has become a beauty spot in Runcorn. Children and adults join in with the many activities organised by the rangers in the visitor centre. Others meet to play bowls, tennis, putting, or to simply enjoy watching life go by. On a warm summer's day when the sun lightens the mood and clouds skip across the sky, the stress and toil of what was once the largest freestone quarry in Britain is forgotten. The area is a place for leisure silently watched over by the wood carving of a quarry worker. The slabs of black rock still form an imposing backdrop where children play. While the witch's cave in Happy Valley entices the more adventurous to risk a spooky encounter. The band plays on just as it did years ago. The music fills the air whilst people gather to relax in the sun and enjoy a few peaceful hours on a Sunday afternoon. The bandstand was built on the site of the first hill quarry and the area was made into a recreational park in 1922. The band playing today uses a newer bandstand which was built in 2004 on the site of the original one. There comes a time when even the music must end and people collect their belongings and saunter home. 
children are ready for sleep and adults are feeling relaxed. The day is coming to an end. As the light fades, the hill is taken over by the natural inhabitants of the night. The days of quarrying the once barren land are long gone, as is the dust and noise which pervaded the air. The hill has returned to a place of beauty, peace, and when desired, solitude, where young and old can find hours of pleasure, and Runcorn people have their own particular stories to tell. <laughs>